So, video 2B is the compilation of our series example game code base classes, which consist of two classes series example and series example game mode base, which, as you can see, consists of no code other than the basic code class framework container and includes so where do we begin so this this is going to take bloody ages so in the meantime we will allow that to compile in the background and there's my name there as well to talk and there's the name of the series example and so in the meantime we will leave this to compile and we shall take a look at what one we have done earlier, like in Blue Peter. So, previous, previously, I have <coughs> compiled and built my own custom game mode called Evasion Interceptor. And Evasion Interceptor consists of some class folders and a lot of code relating to the functionality of our game so the end point of my game I shall show you in a video later but generally this consists of a version interceptor in the same process we had previously created our series example file we will now we will now show you the game classes involved in the creation of a, a C++ game so now first game mode class will be a version interceptor game mode so version interceptor game mode, this is one class. Now we have a version interceptor game mode interface, which is the file with the dot h subscript following it. Now in this class we declare some other classes that our game will be using, which namely will be the Cyberbot AI controller, which is a class that controls the computer jet AI character one of them so and also the player split so now version interceptor game mode will consist of functions that control the logic that dictate what happens in the game and what are the end conditions and what is used to make the game enjoyable and give it logic to dictate how, for instance, inventory is controlled or uh, damage is dealt, how people are killed in the game, a class to control the robots and an inventory class. So no, version interceptor game mode. Now here in the interface we have a class that called version interceptor game mode is extended from a game mode. Now this class has declarations of functions within it which is declared in the interface. Now we have firstly a timer handle declaration type F timer handle, which is a float struct that is declared previously in the API and given a name timer handle default timer. Now this is as you can see it has been annotated with with brackets and a, a hash or a star and that there is that. Now we have a function called a version interceptor game mode which 
will be passed a constant variable with a this here is the uh, reference that denotes a reference a reference to an object initializer which will is generally consistent throughout all of classes they have to be initialized they have objects within the classes that need to be initialized by an object initializer so in the interceptor game mode the object initializer will initialize any variables that we have declared previously in the, in the interface so therefore we have a player controller and a player state class which are the basic classes for a game class a game mode class sorry so we can assign the types used by this game mode to the player controller so a player controller is is the <coughs> Uh, con the interface in between the human input to control the first person character which will declare the way in which the character we control in the game will be controlled by the human player through the control pad. Now, the player state class will di dictate, <coughs> will, dictate shut up, will dictate how the state of the, the current control player is made. So, this, there's not a great deal of RAM for you here at the minute, so that's why we're having issues. Anyway, so, stop that at once. Now, so, in the interface class, we have declarations of functions that will control how our game works. So, we have an interceptor game mode class with a spawn defense inventory function that has a return type of void, which means there is no return type. It is a virtual function, which means it is not it is not assigned an actual variable in this class. It is used only as a placeholder in which it can be extended in further classes and functionality can be added. So we have a spawn defense inventory class that will will be extended to be, have more specific functionality in its ch child classes. So, therefore, we have a, a pointer to a pawn type, a variable, called player pawn, which will be passed to the spawn default inventory function, which will mean that if we call this function, we will need to pass a same type of player pawn func function variable into the function for it to spawn so we must have this type a pawn a pawn is a is a say a player or a, some kind of a any kind of player that can be controlled by the human or by the artificial intelligence so if we go into the implementation we can see that we have a a function relating to our declaration spawn default inventory here spawn default inventory which then has logic that will go through how this function is handled so if at first <coughs> we call this function spawn default inventory and we pass it in an a pawn variable into it so say for instance we have a character that we want to give some inventory to we will call the function spawn inventory function and we will pass it the variable name of the pawn the pawn then must have be of the same type of the class that is declared in the function declaration so the logic that 
that controls this function, which is the function which is in the class version interceptor game mode, which is declared with a void return type, the scope resolution operator, which declares then the function definition and goes into this code within the parenthesis. So then we declare a new variable pointer, which is declared by this star function. And we name it of type a aversion interceptor character called my pawn. We then cast the type aversion interceptor character into our player pawn variable that we have passed into the function so that then it is assigned to this value. So we then assign the value we have passed into the function to this variable. Now, so we have a variable now that we have assigned to whatever we have passed into this function called my pawn. Now, we use logic to work out if my pawn, so this means if there is a pawn that has been assigned to this variable name, then we can pass through this parenthesis and into the second block of logic, which is then for, this is a for loop, which iterates through a sequence of integers beginning at i equals zero for the length of i is smaller than default inventory classes dot num, which is a, an a accessor to the function number of default inventory classes which will work out how many inventory classes there are and will stop at the maximum. So for each loop, this iterator will increase one. So we start at zero, i equals zero, for the number of default inventory classes, plus one. So every time we start, we go zero, we go one, we go two, we go three, if there are three inventory classes. So if there are four inventory classes, we do this whole loop four times. So we go i equals one. Oh, we saw with i equals zero, in fact, but i equals zero. So if defend, invent, default inventory classes i is zero, if there is an inventory class indeed, we then can pass into this function block, and then we can we can we, we can declare a function called f actor spawn parameters and spawn info, which is a, another type that is a struct type in the engine, which declares how the spawning of, of weapons are handled within the game. So then <coughs> we can move on. We have this function and variable, sorry, a spawn info. So then using the spawn info variable, we then can access the spawn collision handling override which will tell us how, how our, uh, our, our static mesh, our representation of the weapon, the inventory, in the game will be handled. So the enumeration that is always declared within the engine API that already handles the weaponry system is, is accessed via this, this function name and the scope resolution operator that declares it always spawn. So that means whichever inventory class that we select will be spawned into the character's hand. Now, we have a version interceptor weapon base pointer type declared with the name new weapon. Now, we can assign this variable new weapon as this. Now, this is get world which will return a reference to the game world that we are playing in. Spawn actor will create spawn as in create the actor within the parenthesis that is is implicitly casted into the type of version weapon base which is our custom aversion weapon base which is over here class programmed separately. So we will go on to that further, but that is... We're going to finish off, Okay. See ya. Now, a version weapon, weapon base, default inventory, classes I. So this is a reference to this value I previously declared. 
So if if our first inventory in our inventory stack is say for instance a machine gun and it has it has location zero we will then cast this value into this class type and then we it will retrieve its spawn info from that and then we can use the my pawn which is previously assigned to the pointer of type casted to inversion interceptor character which is our base character class and then it will use the the accessor operator to call the function from a pointer referenced fun class and call the add weapon function and pass the value of our new weapon into it henceforth spawning the weapon that we have chosen into the character now that is that is one class that's fun one function in one class so this is version intercept to game mode spawn default inventory function in the interface the implementation of said function in one class of our game now so we also have functions that control how the player is killed. The player is killed. This is this is the the declaration and this is the implementation of the function. The player is killed. It is passed one, two, three, four variables into this function that dictate how a player is killed. So this first variable that is passed to this function will 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 declare the player controller which has killed the player the killer then the second variable will pass it will basically it will tell the function or the class through the function which player is killed which player which pawn is killed and what damage type will is used so you know it goes on and on but Basically, this is another declaration of a pointer. It is assigned to a variable name, and then it is initialized with a, a, a this time we have a, a four option. So if the killer is in the first instance this, then we will cast it to this, and if not, it is this, and the kill player is this, and if not, it is this. And then we pass it through to a for loop, and here's another one, and then we go on and on and on. So we have interceptor game mode. This is the killed state. These are the basic classes which we will use within our game. And in this base, this first game mode class, we have declared some of the classes that we will use in the game, which have to include firstly an interceptor, a character to represent our our character our animated mesh with you know his his hero face and and the controller that controls it the camera manager that will control how the camera is located and view, and we can view the character from the the character interceptor base class which will be the base character for all characters in our game the weapon base class which will be the base class for all weapons in our game the player state class, which will be this, the base class for all player states in our game. The objective class, which will be the base class for all objectives in our game. And the quest class, which will be the, the base class for all. So, blah, blah, blah. Now, we have, <clears throat> we have the game mode class, which is the first class. We Then we have another class, which is a version interceptor, which, as we previously seen in our last video had a simple implementation game module which is the primary declaration of the game module we then have a version interceptor interface file which we can then declare which other functionality we would like to use in the engine so in our game in this game we we would like to use unreal motion graphics unreal user widgets unreal slate and then we declare some surface types that are used in our game which will in this game we have declared a flesh type a default a zombie head zombie limbs and collision profile and co weapon collision system so 
they are the basic four classes or files two classes sorry the game mode and the base class for our game so now this this game is 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 almost at its completion and it has many 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 more classes and functions in it now we will go through the simple the simple def definition of some of the classes we can't do it all at once but firstly we have let's start with a version interceptor character so a version interceptor character is the base class for all of the characters in our game now the interface class for a version interceptor character basically will control how our character is displayed on screen, how the animation system works, how the weapon system works, how he can run, how he can jump, how he can hold weapons, how he can shoot, how he can handle inventory, pick up things in the game, how he can drop things in the game, how he can, how he can, you know, for instance, we have some of the classes here that are representative of, you know, how, how he can look around in the game, how he turns in the game, how how he moves in the game, how he can fire, how he the sounds that are associated with, you know, when he is shot or he dies, when when he he, he is at max health, how 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 he increases his health, how if he's alive or not, and um, that's a bool value which is either a one or a zero, which is indicative of whether someone is alive or he is dead. There is only two states existing, you know, so. Then we go on to some other, other functions that are latch functions that can basically control whether the character is sprinting, whether he is not sprinting, whether he is targeting, whether he, what the value is for his health, what the value is of his speed, speed while he's sprinting, whether the sprinting will be replicated across the network. That is a more advanced bit, uh, situation, so we don't need to go into that. These are all function declarations. Now, these are in the interface file. These are to be implemented in the implementation file and assigned values and controlled with logic. Now, so we have a sprinting targeting function. We have, we have some more functions. We have like hundreds of functions in a stupid fucking, sorry for the language. We have, you know, here we go, more, more, and more. Now, so these are all very complicated functions. Now we go over to our interceptor character implementation file, which includes all of our other types that will be related to the interceptor character base class. And within our constructor, which is this section here, we can declare or we can assign values to the variables that we have previously declared. So initially we have declared a value, a variable for health and we will assign it to the value of 100. We have assigned, we have declared a, value, a variable target and speed monitor and we have assigned that to the value of it. We have the same for weapon attachment point which is where the weapon will be attached to on the hand, pelvis, the spine, uh, the collision mesh, the component controlling the collision response, the controller rotation, the character movement, and these are all uh, definitions and that is, you know, the basic initialization of the, 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 the variables required to start off the character when he is spawned in the game. So, we have a function here called begin play. Now, the begin play function in the version interceptor character will handle basically just a value that will give it an inventory number and and the tick number will handle simple function as raycast raycast is is a a virtual line that is drawn from the point of spawning of the projectile from the weapon front into the character uh, lined with the crosshairs on the screen. So upon every tick of the game, this function will be called and it will work out, it will call a function called raycast. Now the function raycast is below, it is declared here, it is defined here, sorry. Now the function raycast 
will have a vector, it will have a start location vector, which will be at the front of the gun, cut component location, but in this case, the start location is the camera component, is the location from where you are looking. The end location will be where you are pointing to. So the end location will be the star location plus plus the offset camera vector raycast because the actual star location is at the point of the front of the gun. Now the hip result is a is a strict is a, is, a, is a variable type that will is declared as whether the raycast is hit a, an actual other character in the game or it has hit something else in the world. Now, now this function here, raycast, is used every tick of the game, which is every every cycle of the compute computer computational cycle, and it will basically it will it will it will cast a ray, a virtual ray, from where we are looking into the screen so that the computer will know whether we have actually hit something or not or where it is we will hit them so now there are some other lines of code in this class which will now it handles ray traces that are in the game and a lot of this stuff is debug messages that have been been hyphened out because we we don't need to have any debug screen online um, so this this little function here is the actual raycast itself so we'll call the function get well which will return a reference to the to the game world that we are in we will then use this accessor to call the function inside this this returned class which will then be called line trace single by channel which will give you a trace from our first location to the end location and it will return a value depending on what is hidden has been hit so if it's a pickup we have a reference pointer to a pickup we have assigned it the name pickup we have cast it to the type of our own pickup and then we have a return type of raycast hit which is the actor get the actor which is make it the current actor and then we have a value for pickup if we have a pickup we set a glow effect which means that if we are hovering our pointer upon something that is pickupable it will give it a glow effect which is is declared in another function glow effect so that's a function call and it is passed a value of true now This function has no return type, it is void. So at the end, you will not see a return value that is given back to the function upon completion. Now we have some a lot of other functions within this interceptor character class, which are related to some of the stuff in the game that it will, the character will require. So for instance, pick up item. So if we need to pick up an item that we are hovered over, this function will be called and it will be added to our inventory there henceforth. If we have dropped an equipped item, we call this function, and then henceforth we go through some logic, some, some more logic, we declare an integer, an index of the item, we give it a drop location, depending on its ray trace, we uh, transform that into the location, and then we spawn the item that we want to drop onto the ground. Now there is a lot of other functions here. Set equipped item, which is when we pick pick or equip an item that is in our inventory. We handle an inventory item. We get health, which returns a value of health to the float to the computer. So here we have a return value of a float. Now this float here, which is returned, is the value of health that is declared previously in the interface. Now we have a max health. We have get weapon attach points, we have spawn default inventory, we have is alive, we have get point, and then we can go on and 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 on, and that is only one class. Now, we have small classes here, this this one is 
the version player state. So it has lots of code as well. So there is there's a big class and a version weapon base. This is the class the base class for all weapons in the game. There's the interface class. And we don't have time to go through all this crap, but basically it's as bullshit as all the other ones. Now look at all the fucking code in that one. That is one class and it has eight, nine hundred lines of code in it. Now we have about fucking twenty classes and they all have the same so even then, after all that crap, we haven't finished. And uh, you know, 